You're looking at 19,500 test plots of oats alone that we look at every year with our partners at LSU, Dr. Dr. Steve Harrison. We've done, we did the original research on food plots. There's not a plant out there that you can ask me about or been about that we haven't tested at some time or another. And out of all of them, all these years, there's about three or four that are worth even talking about. And again, you get sold all kinds of junk, and we'll talk about some of that uh, as we go through this, okay? Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that, that drives John Butler crazy with Buck Forge Oats, and, and me too, <clears throat> is when I hear people say, when people come by the booth or something, oh, those oats there are an oat is an oat. Really? And a pepper is a pepper, isn't it? Okay? There, it took 19 years to develop three varieties of oats. The latest one, the Louisiana 9917 uh, at Buck Forage. 19 years. And a lot of these fe seed companies, they develop one a week. They don't develop them, they just try to sell them to you. So it's all about, about a lot of work. Now, <clears throat> every test I've ever done, the number one preference is oats, number two is wheat, number three is rye, and rock bottom, please never plant it again, rye grass. What? Rye grass. Please do not plant rye, rye grass ever again. Okay? It's not good deer food. If you're deer eating your rye grass, they're starving. All right. <clears throat> they come to oats for one good reason over the others. They have more water and alcohol soluble carbohydrates. They're higher in energy. Okay? The problem with oats in the old days was that oats would freeze out at about 28 degrees. There are two kinds of oats. There are spring oats and winter oats. When I ask, everybody thinks winter oats are grown up north. No, they're grown in the south because they're grown during the winter. And they're primarily designed for grazing. Okay? They have multiple stems. And there's only one that is really cold hardy. There's actually three varieties, but only one that's on the market, okay? <clears throat> this is the 9917, which is, was released last year. It averages 40 to 50 stems per plant. The deer eat it into May, and it takes a very low temperature. We grow it and keep it alive up in Michigan. I'll show you some here in a minute. If you plant wheat, you automatically cut your yield by 40%. 40%. But wheat's cheap, isn't it? But it's also second class. All right, so oats is one of the things that you want to look at. You said it was a 9917? Nine, nine, Louisiana 9970. Just remember it is buck oats. Buck. buck. The variety buck. All right, <clears throat> we test them all over the country. This is one of our test layouts. We call it our salad bar. These are randomly assigned different cultivars, different crosses that we use won't go into it, but why are those little green islands there? We got cages, and so that we know what's, what, how it performs and, and what doesn't. That's not Michigan, that's East Texas three years ago in March. Now, and that's it one day, and that's it the next day. Now, because there's only one cold hardy oak, and it's become so popular, the number one food plot in the country, uh, there's a lot of people wanting to offer something like it. So these stores that, I won't say their name, but they've got the word tractor in their name, and then the big box stores, they're selling you stuff that says cold hardy on it. Cold hardy. Well, that's odd when you start looking at the labels. We test that all the time. <clears throat> Pick out the ones that are not cold hardy. These all represent three different varieties sold to you as cold hardy. And that's not exactly a, a bad winner right there. Here's one of the varieties, Cayuse. The only reason there's some green in that Cayuse plot is that's rye grass that contaminated it. Took me forever to get rid of it out of there. Magnum oats. They always have these wonderful names. Magnum oats. Same story, just less growth. And of course, rye grass is there. And then Jerry is a spring oat. And it was sold as a winter oak, which is really weird. 
Now, how about Bob's? Somebody asked us about Bob's yesterday. Bob's was the first, my first experience 30-something years ago with oats was Bob Oats. A lot of people plant Bob Oats. <clears throat> Guess which one of those is the Bob Oat? The one on the right. One stem, puny roots. The one on the left is the new 9917. An oat is an oat. If we compare Jerry production with 9917, the blue bars over the months is, is 9917, the reds are Jerry's. So you don't get cold hardiness and you don't get production. Then one of the things we do after that <coughs> is we let these guys tell us what they like and don't like. That's how we found out that the brassicas were not really good and a lot of other things that, we, that people put out there. People say, I don't have a place to plant. <coughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. If you can get just a little bit, you'd be amazed how the cereal grains and the clovers will grow in fairly shaded environments. Now, you don't get robust yields, but you, got, you can grow stuff. Rights of ways, the most wasted resource in North America. That's a, that's a right of way of chicory, by the way, which is one of the other handful of plants that we found works real well. So planting rights of ways are very important. <clears throat> Brassicas, I got on a tear about them. Y'all know what brassicas are? They're the family of plants like turnips, rape, which is a real good name for them because that's what they do to you when you sell them. They sell them to you. <coughs> cabbage, that sort of stuff. Have you ever eaten too much cabbage? I, was, I said that the other day and this lady on the front row went, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> they have alkaloids in them, toxic alkaloids. Don't take my word for it. The next time somebody tries to tell you how great they are, tear a leaf and dab it on your tongue, and a minute your tongue will start tingling and it'll go numb. That's because it's toxic. You have to cook it. Okay? It gives deer hemolytic anemia, diarrhea, a whole host of bad things. Now, they get away with it because the deer don't, don't die right there on the spot. And they don't always die. But it's not good for them. And so when we first started criticizing it, people came back and said, well, when it freezes, it turns those alkaloids to sugars. What? Show me the chemistry on that. It increases them. There's less in the roots. There's more in the roots. I hear all kinds of bull. Science is a terrible thing, isn't it? Okay? You've got opinions, and then you've got science. All right. Please never buy a mix of seeds. If you buy a mixture of seeds, here's the two things that are going to happen to you. Here's a, this is a brand X. You, you'd know the name. It'll plant one acre according to the label. Here's what's in it. You go out to the internet and find out how much you're supposed to plant per acre. And then look at how much is actually in it. Uh-oh. And the most abundant one is what? The cheapest one. Okay? So don't do that. Also, look on the labels in the back. A lot of these plants that you buy, these uh, bags you buy, are two and three years out of date. Would you plant garden seed that's two or three years out of date? But they're sitting in the big box stores everywhere. Also, if you got this asterisk or VNS after it, that stands for variety not stated. It's not a recognized variety. They just sweep it up off the floor and uh, put it in a bag. The last thing is, if you got different size seeds in a bag and you shake the bag, what happens? They settle out differently. You can't put them out at the right rate. Some of them need inoculation. Buy just the pure seed. Buy clover seed, buy oat seed, buy chicory seed, or whatever, individually. You'll save money, and it'll be great.